afternoon everybody, Carl Biker here. Still in the garage, the man cave. Still working on my back tyre on the Z1000. If you saw my last video you'll uh, probably notice I've dried off a bit now. So I've had the towels out. <sighs> Hard work that, that Max 2H tyre changer. Much harder than uh, it looked like it would be but you know, I got the tyre off so that's the main thing. And no damage done. Uh, probably a lot better when it's not quite so hot as this. It's about 30 degrees at the minute. Anyway, I'm on to repairing the tyre. So let's have a look at that. So this is the offending part. You can see there, that's where something went in. It was like the end of a nail or something. And I'm just going to push that through to give you an idea because it's quite an interesting part for repairing tyres that I need an angle for anyway. This angle to the tyre. There's lots of rules on repairing tyres. Some people say that they are ways of making money, other people say that they're ways of staying safe. I'm not going to get into that. Just that what I will say is if this angle to the tyre or to the perpendicular of the tyre is over 20 degrees and it isn't, I mean the thing went pretty much straight in and out, then you cannot repair using the method I'm going to do it today. Uh, also if it's not in the centre section of the tyre, which this one is, uh, then you can't repair it. Um, and aside from that, I think that's about it actually on what you can and can't repair. There are rules for different speed ratings of tyre. Uh, this is a Michelin Pilot Road 4 they claim their Z-rated tyres can be repaired as long as you do it in the way that I'm going to do it. So that's all good. Now the reason that I'm worried about these rules, turn that tie round so it's easier to hold. The reason that I'm worried about these rules is I want a proper repair. You can obviously get these puncture repair kits. I have one under the seat on my bike with the gummy worms in. You can get the mushroom ones. Uh, the mushroom ones you kind of force a, a thing through. I've, I've used one in the past to get me home. The gummy worm ones I've not had to use yet. This puncture wasn't enough that I needed to worry about it. It got me home okay. I was only about 10 miles away. Um, and the gummy worms they kind of go in folded through the hole from the outside, bend in half and then melt into place and seal everything up. Um, but those are classed as temporary repairs. And there's a reason why they're temporary. Um, for a start, they go in from the outside, not the inside. So it's possible, though I'm sure most people will tell you that they've never heard of it happening. I've never heard of it happening. But it is possible that it could be forced out again. Um, some of them don't seal the hole fully. Now that's important to get that sealed. So you've got to do a, a correct seal for the hole itself. Because if you don't, there's lots of metal bits uh, cords running through the tyre that give it its, its structure and if you have those break then it can get water into those through the hole, those, those can get rotten and then the tyre can be damaged structurally and then the first thing you know about it is when something really bad happens. Um, that's even the case with a patch repair so people say that if you take the tyre off and do a patch on the inside then uh, that's a good repair. That doesn't count either for the rules because it doesn't fill the hole so you, you might have a patch inside the tyre but there's nothing in that hole so water can still get in can still rot that metal and all that's kind of important for safety uh, and if you're not worried about the safety side of it then the other side of it is insurance if you have a failure of a tyre that's been repaired incorrectly or that's had an unsuitable repair according to the rules there's a whole set of British standards for these rules. I'm sure there's stuff the world over that's the same. But if you have a, an accident that's caused by that type of failure of tyre or that the insurance company would say has been affected by that, then you can find you without insurance. And also if you have a tyre blowout and it's not been, you know, it's got a repair but it's not one of these repairs, then you have no comeback on the tyre manufacturer if you're injured or things are damaged and you want to try and make a claim against the manufacturer. If you've had a proper repair done, what's called a plug patch, which is what I'm going to do today, or a separate patch and plug if that angle is over 25 degrees,
then you can actually make those claims and not have a problem with your insurance company. So that's the type of repair I'm looking to do today. So I've mentioned it already, a plug patch, let's have a look at what that is. This is my magic drawer of tyre repair things and in here I have got some plug patches, there you go. That's a plug patch. Basically it's a large patch that's applied inside the tyre and a plug that comes through the tyre and out. So obviously that's a bit long, it gets snipped off once it's through. But you've got that large patch that's covering up and stopping any air escaping from inside and then this section here actually plugs the hole, melts in and makes sure that there's no cords, no metal bits of tyre that could come into contact with water and rust. So it's as simple as that. Now there's a lot more to it than that, you have to use lots of tools to get it right. You have to use a scraper, you have to use a buffer, looks like a golf ball. Um, and you have to use galvanising, oh sorry not galvanising, vulcanising solution to melt the rubber all together. And if we come over here, got a bit of, so you have to use a bit of liquid buffer and you have to use a bit of inner liner sealer. And if you do all of these things then you should have a correct repair. And this is the kind of thing that you should get if you go and have a repair, if you actually pay for one. They should do all of these steps. Me being the trust, trusting person that I am, uh, I'm going to do it myself. On that note, before I carry on, am I recommending you do this yourself? No, not really. It's actually not that expensive a job to have done. Um, probably cost you 20 quid to have a tyre repaired if you take the wheel in. Probably a little bit more than that if you take the bike in. Um, but I think it's interesting to see what should be done. Um, and it's also, it means that I know it has been done correctly. Okay, step one. I'm going to inspect the tyre first. Right, so tyre inspection. So that's where my uh, puncture was. And if I look on the other side, right, inside the tyre. Okay. Now, it's not that the camera isn't picking this up. I can't even see where it's come through. I'm going to have to poke my poker through again and find out, mark it all up so that a repair in the right place. Um, but it's it's very important, something that you don't get if you do just an external, one of these temporary uh, mushrooms, gummy worms, temporary repairs. You don't get to inspect the inside of the tyre. And it's quite possible that when something's gone into your tyre, especially if it's gone in and then popped out again and you can see a very small hole, it could be a much larger hole on the inside of the tyre. You know, it could have got torn, it could have uh, pinged a few of the um, the, the metal uh, cores inside, could have damaged them. So you need to check inside your tyre. I'm going to check it all, a good go around all of it, just to make sure that there's no extra damage in there that you weren't expecting. And also that there's no gunk in there. I mean, this tyre's clean inside, but it's quite possible that if there's been some damage and the tyre's gone flat and then you've ridden the bike with a tyre that's a bit flat, it could have done some damage, in, damage inside to the rubber. So you're just checking, making sure that there's no rubbish in there, there's no um, cords gone, no bigger damage than you expect. And also it's important that you compare it to other repairs. So if this tyre's been repaired before, especially if you bought a bike and you've not put new tyres on it yet, you don't even know if it's had punctures in the past. So if there are other repairs in there, there are rules. Uh, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but you can look them up. But there are rules about where you can put other repairs. Because if you've got a repair, I mean the obvious one, if you've got two repairs that overlap, you're never going to get a good seal. But if you've got repairs that are in line with each other, or so many within a certain portion of the tyre, then it becomes not repairable because it's just not safe anymore. Um, but, as I say, this is clean, and we'll have a check around the rest of it, just to uh, make sure. Uh, so I'm pretty com I'm pretty happy that the tyre hasn't been compromised and can be repaired. Right, I've gone round the entire tyre. There's no fraying, there's no mess, there's no dust. There's nothing left in from the nail that went through in the first place. So of course there could be sharp pieces left in from that as well. So I've popped this through. I've got my trusty paint pen. So I'm going to look where this has come through on the other side 
and draw myself a new target. All right, I don't know if you can see that. That's where the little poker is. This is the patch that I'm putting on inside. You can see it's quite a big patch cons compared to the size of the hole. So I'm going to mark it with a circle that's bigger than that patch so I can see where it is because a few chemical processes you need to do that will take the paint pen off. And I'll also do a crosshair so I can see exactly where it is if I accidentally remove my circle. So it is there. So that's what's getting repaired. I've probably gone a bit too big on my circle, but you know, better too big than too small. For the next step, I need my first tool. Well, I suppose I use my pointy stick, but my first proper tire repair tool, which is this one. This is a reamer. So it's a special drill bit that is designed for going through tires. So it'll go through rubber and it'll go through metal, but it won't damage the metal. And the idea is, I'm doing that, that's very sharp, I don't know why I keep doing that to myself. So it'll drill through, but as well as drilling through, it creates a very clean circular hole using all these parts. It's a very hard material, tungsten carbide, I think. Um, so this goes through the tyre in a slow drill, twice from the outside, twice from the inside. Should leave you with a nice smooth hole and clean cuts through the any cords that are going to be affected. Um, and that's then the same size, well, I say the same size, it's probably slightly different size, see how close they are. Uh, they're not far off, but that's a reamer for a 3mm hole, and that's a plug patch for a 3mm hole. So they are matched. If you've got a bigger hole, you might need to go to a 6mm. Um, I believe you can't repair bigger than a 6mm on a motorbike tyre, but you might need to go to a 6mm. Rema 6mm plug patch um, and obviously always use the right right plug for the tool. There's a lot of words for saying make sure that that matches that. I've reamed out the hole from both sides, it's now a much bigger hole. It certainly wouldn't hold any air anymore. And you can see they're much bigger. Should be able to see my torch through it. So quite a nice round hole in there. There's a few bits and pieces in there, but they'll soon melt when it gets to uh, the vulcanizing time. For the next step, time for the liquid buffer. So this is just a chemical that's going to go onto the inside of the tyre where the uh, damage is. And what this is going to do, this tyre is like a fake rubber kind of silicone -y lining inside the tyre. And this is just going to uh, interfere with that, melt it down a bit and let us scrape that away because that won't vulcanise. So if you put a patch against it, uh, the patch won't seal properly. And this is not the nicest thing in the world. This liquid buffer stuff. It's poisonous. It's flammable. It's kind of nasty. Try and get a decent amount on there without getting it everywhere. It's not the easiest thing in the world to pour either. Oops. Oh, there's plenty in there now. A bit more than I wanted, really. That do its thing for a minute. So 
So that's a little while to go off and you can see it's changed the look of the tyre. So now, get my scraper and see if I can scrape away any junk. Some little bits coming away. But that should now be clean of any silicone that would have been sat on top of it. Now, what we've got now is a rough surface. So this mould got this texture to it. And again, to make sure everything sticks well and to make sure that no air can come out, we need to get rid of that where we're going to be applying the patch. And that's where a magic golf ball comes in. This buffer attached to my uh, airline. I mean you could put it in a drill but I'm going to do it on my um, airline with a grinder. And it basically, very rough, I'm just going to lightly take off that, uh, that pattern and get a nice smooth surface of fresh rubber that will all hopefully vulcanise nicely. What I'm going to do is redraw my circle so I know where to where I want to buff up to. I don't want to buff too much. Oops. The trusty paint pen <laughs> is a bit over the top. What I'm after, once this white paint has dried, is to get rid of all of the silicon stuff. So all this is now looking grey, that's where the silicon is. I'm going to cut through it so it goes black like this and it'll feel kind of sticky because it's proper rubber rather than this synthetic stuff. Um, again, don't want to take too much out. I definitely don't want to expose any of the cores if I can possibly avoid it. Um, just wait for this paint to dry. I am literally sat here watching paint dry. And if you're still watching, so are you. now pretty smooth and it has got a stickiness to it and that rubber stickiness this is just hard it feels like plastic but this is yeah, it grips you and just to make sure everything's nice and clean just go over that with a wire brush get any loose debris off see there's a few bits that have come off with the buffer Get all them out of the way, and then I shall vacuum it out. Right, so that's all prepared. Next thing to do is to put a bit of the vulcanising solution, rubber cement, if you're a cyclist. Just a thin layer where the patch is going to go. I'm not really squeezing at this point, I'm just using the tube because I don't have a can of the stuff with a brush. So I'm just using the tube on the end to spread the stuff out and obviously make sure there's enough that the patch will be completely covered. Get me patched to compare it, I don't think I need to worry. Oh, actually, <laughs> a little bit more. 
just to be sure. And let that go to work. Whilst that dries in there, because it needs to dry, I'm just going to take the plug patch and I'm going to put a bit of a vulcanising solution right up here, out of the way. That bit's not actually going to be uh, in the tyre at all, that's going to get cut off in the end. But as I draw this through the tyre, it should leave a bit of vulcanising solution behind it. And that should help it seal the plug part. And then I need to take the blue backing paper off. And I want to do this without, ideally, touching the patch itself where the adhesive is. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. Alrighty. Now I can put it through the tyre. Yep, that's dry. So all I'm going to do here is find the hole and pop the metal bit of the patch through. And then pull the rest through from the outside. And it's quite tight. Oh. Quite tight he says. And knocks over the camera. So it's quite tight. Just pull that. And there it is, sticking out. That'll make a clattering sound when I ride it, wouldn't it? And inside, the patch is pretty much home. Now that part where I pulled it quite a long way out and knocked the camera over, the key part really is that when you pull this it stretches and it stretches right away from the tyre and then when you release it and the thing goes back in it fills that hole and that's, that's what will hopefully stop any water getting in and damaging the core of the tyre. So the last job is stitching. I say the last job is stitching, I'm calling it that because you use this stitching tool. Essentially, just going to start, if you imagine that's the patch, pushing it in the middle, rolling up and down and working my way to one edge, and then the same on the other side, working my way to the other edge. Do that a few times, and that seals the patch, hopefully pushes out any air bubbles, any gaps, gets a good seal on it. So, starting in the middle, and I'll start this way and work my way to the edge and then back to the middle and work my way to the other edge and then the same thing again but in the other direction and they say you should do this twice so do it twice. Can't hurt, can it? And that's that. Now I can remove the Again, remove that top plastic cover. Try and snag it with a hook. And there's my patch. Now that it's patched, hopefully that's a good seal. And I'll just snip off the excess here. And it's protruding a little bit, but I'll soon wear away. I think sillily earlier on I said that I was on my final job and I wasn't. There's still one more job to do, which is to use this stuff. So where this has had the liquid buffer far too far across here, uh, and it's also had the mechanical buffer here, all of that potentially now, uh, it, it doesn't have this coating anymore, this nice seal that they put on. It's got a potential for micro leaks apparently. So the idea here is you paint this stuff over the whole lot, as I say, a bit too much probably with that liquid buffer. But you paint this over the whole lot 
and let it dry and that gives it that kind of fake silicony rubber covering that it had before. So I'll do the whole area that the liquid buffer touched. It may well change the weight of the tyre a little bit but I'm going to have to balance it again anyway. And you also cover over all of your new patch, your new repair. It's gooey stuff. And that slightly messy uh, tyre interior is the completed repair. So I'm going to leave that to dry, pop the tyre back on, pump it up and uh, hopefully I've now got a bike I can ride again. Or I will have once I've put the wheel back on. So thanks for watching everyone, hope that was uh, enjoyable. Ride safe and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye!